Hello everyone, Bill the Sky Guy here. Today we're doing an unboxing video of the Celestron 8-inch schmidt cassegrain Next Star Evolution Telescope System with the AutoSense star alignment. And, uh, well, you just gotta love it when someone else buys your toys for you. Music! Okay, so here we go. Um, let's get them. We got four boxes. There's the complete telescope setup, plus some accessories, very exciting. And let's see what we've got. Well, looks like the tape is the strongest part of this box, but we'll go in the right way. Gotta love a good utility knife. Okay. Pretty basic. We'll start with the tripod. Leveling screws. You got a bubble level there. Pretty basic. Standard Celestron fare. I like that Celestron has started putting the screws for the leg extenders on the inside because I always used to snare my pants leg on those things and yank the tripod and what a drag that was. Okay, next box. Ah, yes, the tube. Okay, well, sure enough, right in there. Do not eat. Comes with every telescope. Guess they figure we all must be ravenous from staying up all night or something. Come on. Yeah, I knew you could do it. There you go. Do not eat. Unless you really, really. And don't point your telescope at the sun again. Okay, so here we have the tube. Get that off of there. All right, eight inch. One and a quarter inch visual back, but we bought the two inch visual back for this. So it should be good. Evolution, is that a sticker? Yeah. Yeah, this is like the Rasa that turns. There we go. Very nice. And we got Bob's knobs for those too. So this should be good. Okay. Sale on bubble wrap. Okay, so this is the accessories box. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. So many good things. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so here we have a... Uh, like I say, they bought the uh, two-inch visual back. That's interesting. All right, so... Apparently, besides just being a good 8-inch SCT, they've got this new thing. They've got the StarSense Auto Align. It's a thing you put up on the uh, telescope. And uh, apparently, you can just turn it on, and it will automatically 
a line to the sky using a uh, software routine. So it'll be interesting to check that out when I can get this out under the sky. And um, that should be that should be very good. Okay, what is this here? Oh, a printed manual, unbelievable. Oh, okay. This would be the spreader for the tripod legs. It helps keep the tripod legs very stiff. Goes up there like that, supports all three legs. Pole goes in the center, you can put your eyepieces or whatever here. Get a little, that's interesting, nice tray there. Well, they've, they've advanced that design a little bit, that's happy. All right, stick that over there. All right, like I said, we wanted to go for some two inch eyepieces. So, ooh. Well, if you have a tiny little lunch, you could put it in here. All right. Oh, I thought that was something else not to eat. All right, let's open this up. And sure enough, don't eat that either. That's curious. We'll screw on that was before the uh, visual back and then one and a quarter inch adapter there. Compression ring, nice black, shiny thing. All right, we'll look at that, a little polishing cloth. Okay. That's a little awkward. Love the box though. Okay. Let's see, we did that already. What do we got here? Oh, well, this telescope is going to be used at public stargazes, so they bought one of these smartphone adapters so that people could uh, take pictures of the moon or whatever. Okay, so here's scope accessories. All right, so this is the thing that clips onto the leg that holds the hand controller. And your typical red dot finder with a little tiny battery that lasts like 10 years. Assume you don't leave it on. I usually leave it on though. And okay, AC adapter. That's good. Let's get that out. Okay. And it's one of these universal ones. Well, we're in the United States, so we'll use this one. I've got quite a collection of these things. I could do astronomy in three different continents. All right. All right, ready for 110. All right, so you, with the, this length cord, you're gonna need electricity at the base of the scope. Extension cord probably involved there. All right. Okay, standard eyepiece comes with it. This is a Plossel. Thirteen millimeter 
Plossel eyepiece, one and a quarter. It's fully coated. The question is with what? All right, that's fun. Probably won't use that much. And what is this? Another eyepiece. This is a 40 millimeter fossil. And that's good because they've got some pretty high power eyepieces here. If we bought some extra eyepieces, wait till you see them. All right, so one and a quarter, 40 millimeter. Yep, that's, that should be decent. That's as wide a view as you, I guess you're going to get out of this. What else is in here? Oh, okay. Well, we won't bother with this. This is the one and a quarter inch star diagonal that would be stock with the scope. Uh, looks serviceable enough, but... Not what we're after. Okay. All right, that's it for this box. We'll be repackaging all of this so that we can use it. Okay, now, talk about some accessories. Here's one. Those of you that know what that label is, this is a 16 millimeter ethos. This is the top of the line Teleview eyepiece. And if you've never looked through top of the line Teleview eyepieces, let me tell you, it's the thing. Come on. There we go. Yeah. It's cool. It's got this dual barrel kind of thing going on. You, it'll fit into a one and a quarter uh, uh, hole or a two inch hole. And you can get that all working. Typical Teleview top, fold up eyepiece cup. I was expecting it to be. Oh, well, this is a six millimeter. How about that? Six millimeter ethos. Talk about some clear magnification. This is a 2,000 millimeter scope, so that's going to be that's going to be some serious magnification. All right. What else do we have here? Something else says Teleview. You're going to love that. It's another Ethos. This is the 13. Ooh. Don't unscrew the barrel. The lenses will fall out. Okay, well, that's good advice. Yeah, so the Ethos series has a 100-degree field of view, apparent field of view, and... Uh, 13 millimeters. So that's going to be that's going to be some very wide but still decent magnification on this. That's going to be like what 170 power or something. Oops. Just dropped it. The Ethos series is the most expensive. Uh, I've got a 21 millimeter Ethos that's uh, two inch. That it's about 800 dollars. These are about 600 dollars a piece, and that's going to be good. Okay, one more box. I wonder what's in that. If you've ever seen this stuff before, you probably know that this is going to be the mount head. With that crazy little arm. Sure 
it off. Okay, we'll start with the easy stuff. Hand controller. Yeah, your typical next star thing, but uh, but you gotta love this. On the bottom, an actual real live USB port. Mini USB, but still just a standard USB connector. So you can run all your software through this and not have to go through those crazy, you know, DB9 to serial to RS232 serial connection things. That's just it was just insane. All right, well, let's see how this goes on. Pull it out of here. So this is going to go on top of the mount. The telescope dovetail bar is going to go through there. And let's see how this all works. Okay, so we have, we have two manuals. We have the manual for the scope. And then there's a separate manual for the hand controller and all the stuff that you can do with that. All right, I feel confident that I could put this on without looking at the manual. So let's do that. It always seems to be better if you can kind of, as you're tightening this, kind of get the legs spread a little bit. You always seem to be able to tighten it a little bit more. Rigidity is your friend. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, now I could just pick this thing up and just slap it on there and see what happens, but perhaps there's a particular direction. So let's just see if there's anything about that. Assembly and setup. Okay, it doesn't say that there's a an orientation that's preferred on here. So let's just put it on there. Ooh, nice handles. Got to get the screws lined up. There's three screws on the bottom. That should do it. Oh, locks into place. Let's get these started. That feels about right. Oh, they're spring loaded. Get some good tension that way. seems to be some kind of a tension thing. I imagine that you want this tight, but not super tight. Okay, that shouldn't turn too much. Okay, so here on the back, here are your input ports. What are they? Oh, it's got Wi-Fi. Auxiliary four. USB out. Okay, I'm getting the I'm getting the hang of this. It's good to be dealing with some modern equipment. All right, so here's the the dovetails. Okay, balance is important. All right, a little front heavy, but we don't have the right visual back on there yet. So let's do that, tighten. 
altitude. Make it easy. There we go. Gotta be really careful not to cross thread these things. Okay, that's good. Two inch visual back. Very nice. Let's see what this looks like with some Teleview hotness. Hmm. I guess if you're using this as a two inch, you take that out. All right, now let's check our balance. Oops, a little back heavy. One of the things that's nice about the Schmidt casts is, is that they don't change balance or when you change focus because the, the eyepiece is not racking in or out. That's pretty good. Typically what I would do is put some kind of a mark on the dovetail at this point. There are maybe a little sticker or something, but just for basics, I'm going to go ahead and do that. That should get me pretty close. All right. Well, this is not bad. It would be good to get this out in front of some stars. Okay, so earlier I made the comment about somebody else buying my toys for me. I didn't pay for this scope. Uh, I live in Hilton Head Island, which is a resort community. And part of the way I make my living down here, this is just crazy, but it's true, is I get paid to give sky tours to the resort guests. I do this like three nights a week, maybe four now. And uh, one of the places that I work at decided they wanted to have their own scope. And they went out and purchased uh, this unit with the eyepieces. And uh, I get to use it. So how good is that? Anyway, looking forward to putting this thing through its paces, seeing what these Teleview eyepieces can do, and uh, especially checking out the AutoSense Auto Align. What, let's, let's bust into that. So I've gotten pretty good at doing alignments. What, another hand control? Okay, that's the unit itself. A couple of screws. Ah, this goes into one of the auxiliary ports. It's like an ST4 cable. There we go. All right, so this attaches to the top of the tube in some way. It has ST4 and a USB port on it. Maybe, uh, I thought I saw something alluding to the fact that maybe you can use this to take some pictures. That would be interesting. So, two different things. And another hand control. This is interesting. Peel off protective film, well, of course. All right. Well, this is interesting. Two different hand controllers. We'll see. This is going to be fun to play with. I'm, I'm particularly interested to see how well this works, how easy it is. Uh, the, the company that bought this actually bought three of these systems, and I'm going to go around and teach people how to use it. So hopefully it's just uh, incredibly easy. Well, that's it. Bill the Sky Guy signing off with the Celestron Nexstar Evolution with the Star Sense Auto Alarm.
Thanks for watching.